Hey guys, it's time to finally take a look at my out-of-box review for the high-grade G-Self Assault Pack. As you can see, just standing here, I've got just the G-Self uh, Gundam by itself without the Assault Pack. We'll take a look at the Assault Pack here soon enough, but there were some changes here on the actual Gundam, so I wanted to just take a look at those first and just show you a little bit about the articulation of the Gundam as this is the first version of the G-Self that I've put together. I have not put together the previously released original version, or the space pack. So this is going to be my first time taking a look at that. So let's go ahead and take a look. First thing about this that I want to say is that there is an insane amount of stickers on this kit. Um, here's a look at the sticker sheet. There's even a few on there that I haven't used. I know some of these are for the feet, uh, for the original G-Cell feet, so that's why those aren't used because those uh, feet are different now, thankfully, because I do like these feet quite a bit more. But a couple of these also, they weren't X'd out on the manual. I think I just used them, or I missed where they were supposed to be used or something. I'm not sure, but anyway. There are a couple of stickers there that um, even didn't even make it on the kit, but putting this kit together, you will definitely notice the amount of stickers uh, that are going to be going on there. But that's only if you're the kind of person that uses these. Actually, the only reason I put the stickers on is just for the review. Normally, when building a kit, I wouldn't even use them because I would just be painting them anyway, so um, that's just for those of you who do like to use the foil stickers, just know that there are quite a lot, most notably on the head, this piece there on the top of the head uh, is a three different color, it's one sticker but it's three different colors on top of a piece where like if you're painting that by hand it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but it seems like they could have done that better in terms of just molding it in the correct colors, or at least one of those colors, so that you'd only have to paint two of the three colors, but I don't know. Anyway, the other thing that was really a huge disappointment for me is that in all of these stickers we didn't get a just uh, like mirror finish sticker to put under that clear part in the like the cockpit hatch kind of area there. That clear part it's nice and it's clear, but if there was a, a mirror sticker to put behind that, like we see with like some double O kits that they put behind the GN condensers, that would make that part stand out so much more and it would look so much better. There are a couple other clear parts on there, but it, like these parts here on the side of the legs, but those, it would be hard to get any sort of sticker up inside of there to really help with the light. Actually, these clear pieces inside, these parts on the side of the leg, almost don't even look clear at all just because they're totally uh, contained inside those parts. You're not really ever going to even notice that they're clear, really, unless you know you really do a lot of work to make those shine. But anyway, let me give you a 360 degree look at this kit. I also want to note that the stickers, these white parts on the side of the hand, those are actually the wrong stickers. Uh, I just used the stickers off of this uh, sticker sheet, but these are the ones that I was supposed to use. Let me show you that. Uh, these are the stickers that came for the uh, Assault Pack. These are just the original ones. They are a slightly different shade. The ones that came with just the G-Self, those are kind of off-white. The ones that I was supposed to use are just white, so I don't know, not really much of a difference there, but there is a slight difference. So as you can see, basically the biggest difference about this version of the G-Self is going to be that it's very red instead of just the normal kind of blue and white and red and yellow color scheme of the original. It was just kind of normal Gundam colors. In this version, we've got uh, a lot more red here at the top. The torso and shoulders are all red. And the legs, and the legs are, are going to be the only change in the mold for this. We've got new parts, and these red parts around the uh, lower part of the leg basically just wrap around the um, original leg, so the original leg is inside of there, and then these got these new parts that go around, new kneecap parts, and then the feet, the feet are now in this kind of high heel feet. I 100% prefer these new feet. I didn't like the old feet at all just because with the, the design on like the side edge of them made them look like, like some like basketball shoes or something. Uh, nothing against basketball, but just I did not like the look of those feet at all. And these uh, just give the kit some extra height, so I also like kits with very long legs, it's very Kotoki style, so I do like that. And so the other new part in there, inside is you get a new part for the ankle that basically just extends the ankle joint a little bit to give it some more extra height. 
and then of course with the high heels as well. So this kit is probably, I don't have the original kit to put it next to, but I imagine it is maybe about somewhere around one centimeter taller. Not that much, but it's definitely a noticeable amount just in the overall proportions. Just looking at the kit, uh, it definitely gives it a different look. So I like that quite a bit. Let's take a look at some of the articulation, and the articulation on this kit as well as on the Assault Pack is something that I'm going to come back to. It's um, great in some places and really uh, disappointing in other places. Not so much disappointing as in because when I went into this kit I was expecting some disappointments, so that was not a surprise, but just let's just say that uh, the articulation in some areas uh, leaves something to be desired. So let's take a look closer up here. Starting off with the head, it's very normal. Uh, some really nice forward and back action. Uh, looking down, looking up, pretty good. I think there's no problem with the head. The head is very kind of long, it seems like. I don't know if that's just me, but anyway. I'm totally fine with the forward pointing antennas like that. It's, it's not bad at all and I kind of dig it. I like that the eyes are much larger on this so I do like the, that those parts of the G-Self. Uh, just when you're going to actually be painting this you're going to have to be doing a lot of hand painting. You have to paint the Vulcans, all the, the color apps that are now part of the sticker and then of course the eyes which is pretty normal. Yellow parts on the side of the head, of course the blue cameras on the back of the head and all of that. Uh, Moving on to the torso, this part does have a pretty nice bend there, so this is one of the areas that is pretty good. It's not a whole lot, but for an HG, you normally don't get a whole lot. So this is pretty good, pretty average, it's, it's a little bit, it's enough to be noticeable, so that's good. Uh, the arms, you're just getting uh, standard rotation there, pretty standard up, yeah, that happens. Pop, that ball joint pops out of that polycap pretty easily. Uh, up about that much and then around everything kind of normal. The I, This is one thing I don't like about the Reconquista and G kits is that the ball joint is just molded onto the shoulder armor part so that's just all one piece. I prefer it where the connection and the shoulder are separated so you can raise the shoulder armor separately. Uh, but that's that. This is not the kind of uh, polycap that is going to swing out very much. It does a little bit, but as you can see, once you're trying to pull it out, it's more likely to just pop the arm, uh, pop the ball joint out of that polycap. It does come out a little bit, but you just have to be careful with that. So anyway, the elbow has a double joint, but it doesn't actually move that much. So let me get this shoulder straight away. Uh, it only is going to go 90 degrees. There is a double joint in there, but it's not even going to be able to uh, fulfill that movement just because of the design of the arm. The wrist is very normal, just ball joint wrist, so nothing much to report there. The front skirts can move independently, no problems there. It's a little bit odd how they move, and then they look kind of weird how much the angle there points down onto the side. That's okay. The side skirts as well are very small, so it's kind of cool. It fits the look of the kit, I think. I do like those. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of movement there, but not really a whole lot. Back skirts, of course, are not going to move at all. The uh, hips. Now, the hips are pretty disappointing, but um, I don't know. Uh, they don't rotate at all, so that's kind of disappointing. That's the disappointing thing. Of course, they go forward and back and out. Uh, as much as you're going to want, but they don't rotate at all. So you're only going to get about that far, and that's not very far if you wanted to make those legs more pointed out. So a little bit disappointing there. The other thing, as I mentioned before, I don't like the look of the front of this thigh, uh, those panel lines. Some people have compared it to the turn A. I think the turn A looks great with all of its panel lines. This it just looks weird. I don't really know what that's supposed to be because it doesn't look like panel lines it just looks like some weird design that they just put on there to kind of break up the space a little bit but very unnecessary these things here on the side I also they rotate but these are something that I also don't really understand or like about the design I mean I guess I understand them to a point but um, they're just kind of meh nothing really great the knee you do have a very nice bend here at the knee a uh, pretty good double joint that's not going to give you 
uh, total 180, uh, but it is more than 90, and it's good, uh, as much as you're going to want or need, I think. And it's the same story in the angles. Ankles, um, nothing spectacular, but everything that you'd want. Uh, down, about that far, forward, about that far. Of course, this piece on the front is going to move a little bit. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as you've probably noticed, or as I'm about to... Uh, point out about this is that one thing that I do really like about this that I was a little bit surprised about is how well a lot of the seam lines are hidden. Uh, they've done a really good job of uh, hiding most all of the seam lines as panel lines. It's like here on the arm, that's a, the seam line there, but it, you can't notice it here on the arm. Here on the front of the leg, if I just pull it apart a little bit, or maybe you can see it, like that's the seam there, but it just looks like it's part of the design. So very, very minimal uh, seam line removal you're going to have to do. There's a little bit on the top of the head, uh, which is a very, uh, what do I want to say, detailed part. So like removing that seam line is probably going to be pretty difficult. But other than that, the only other ones that are on the sides of the thighs, the outside and inside of the thighs, and those are going to be very, very easy to get rid of. So as far as seam lines, it's really good. Uh, I do quite like that. I like the new red up around the top. I like the new legs. They're a huge improvement for me. Uh, so, so far the g self's doing pretty good. Don't like the stickers, uh, but that's just something that you are going to have to deal with with a, with a high grade and just something that if you want to be painting your kits, you're just not really going to even consider that as a good or bad point anyway because it's just not really important at all. But uh, so far, the G-Self is pretty good. I actually am pleasantly surprised. Let's take a look at the accessories, and that would also include the Assault Pack. Okay, so our accessory list is going to be pretty short, but uh, when you consider probably the reason you're going to be buying this, that's really not too much of a disappointment. Now, the first thing that we've got is just a action base connector. This is if you want to connect the G-Self and the Assault Pack onto just a standard action base instead of the base that's included with the kit. So this is great to have because, uh, as I'll mention when I talk about the Assault Pack, this is something that I think would look much better on an actual action base instead of the included base, so that's pretty cool. The next thing is not technically really an accessory for this kit, it's the two beam saber handles. Now, uh, of course in this kit, because we're getting some new parts, new legs for there, uh, there's going to be a lot of extra parts, so it's mostly all the extra parts for the feet and ankle armor and original ankles and that, that we've got some extra parts there that we're not going to be using, but also we're not going to be using these beam saber handles. Personally, I really like the design of these beam saber handles and I would love to use them with this kit. The problem is, and this is a huge problem for me, is that there are no beam saber effect parts included on this kit. I think at the very least we should have got the beam saber effect parts for these. Personally, I think that we should have got some beam effect parts for the, G for the assault pack as well, but again, I'll come back to that. But at the very least, I think we should have got the uh, beam saber effects for this. I really have no clue why they didn't <laughs> include those. I can't imagine that they would have really saved all that much money by not including those beam saber effects that they already had molded and used with the original kit. We already have all of the runners for the original kit in here, uh, except for the atmospheric pack, of course. But uh, why they didn't just go ahead and throw that uh, small runner of effect parts for these beam saber effects in there, I don't know. But uh, if you have any extras, of course the connection is a little bit different and actually the shape is a little bit different as well. So in order to get it accurate, you'll have to do a little bit of work, but you can do it if you want. Of course, it's very simple, it's only three parts, uh, just the sandwich side and then the barrel part, or no, actually four parts, yeah, there's a part that goes on the, this part on the top is separate as well, but anyway, it's very simple, and according to the color guide for it, there's going to be a lot of hand painting on here. Now, of course, that is totally up to you, I think if you wanted to just leave it all gray like this, like, I would say definitely paint it up. But then if you wanted to leave it all one color, it probably would be okay. I mean, maybe just do a, a couple color apps on there it would be very easy to hand paint just because of the way everything's segmented if you wanted to paint just these like 
two parts on the bottom or like this part going across the top. It would be very easy to paint the color apps on this, so not really too much of a problem. That does it for the accessories. There's no shield uh, for this, uh, which is fine. I'm definitely fine with that. And nothing else in terms of any other weapons because it just doesn't have them. So let's take a look at the assault pack. Actually, whoops, sorry guys, a couple of things that I forgot to mention. One is that the bottoms of the feet are totally there, no holes to fill in in the bottom of the feet. And the other thing that I wanted to say about the rifle is that it does have an actual trigger finger, which is good. Now, I don't remember if the original G Self had a trigger finger as well, I'm assuming that it did, but just the fact that other Reconquista and G kits are not giving you a trigger finger, it's just nice that we do actually have one with this kit, so that's good. Alright, so let's talk about the Assault Pack. Uh, this, like the G-Self, has some things that I really like and some things that I thought were a little bit disappointing. For the most part, I really like it, and that was this was basically my entire reason for buying this kit, because I just like the look of this Assault Pack. Uh, I like the design, I like the color, although whenever I do actually paint this all up, I might actually change the colors. But it's big, it's red, it's flashy, so it was cool in my book. It definitely caught my eye and it definitely made me buy the kit, so that's why it's here. But that is to say, it's definitely not perfect, but it does have a lot of good things going on for it. So let's talk about that. Like the G-Self, it has a lot of stickers for one, but most of the stickers on here are some very easy color apps that would be easy to paint, like a lot of these uh, these black spaces on the back of the boosters, those are just black stickers, very easy to just paint those in. These blue stickers on there, on the side of here, on the front there, just a couple blue stickers, that would be easy to paint as well. Uh, one thing that I'm glad they didn't give us stickers for was the missiles. The missiles uh, in the missile pods, which we'll take a look at shortly, uh, are just molded parts rather than just any kind of stickers, so that's good. Those will be really good to paint. Once they're painted, they'll look really terrific because they're molded very, very nicely, so that's good. Uh, otherwise, let's talk about the molding a little bit more while we're there, and let's just say that this kit is very, very simple. Um, just in terms of its construction, of course, it's very, very simple as well, but I just mean in terms of the amount of details that we've got on the design. Now, that could go both ways as either a plus or a negative for you. If you're the kind of person that doesn't do a lot of modifying uh, and you want something with a lot of detail, this is not going to be for you. But if you're the kind of person that likes to go in and add a lot of your own customized details to your kit, then this is going to be great for you. Or, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like a lot of details and you like your kit to look pretty simple, then it's going to be great for you too. Basically, however you want to take it, whether you see the lack of detail as a negative point or whether you see it as a clean slate to do your own customizing, uh, that's just, it, it is what it is. So, there's not a lot of detail there. But personally, I think I like the simplicity of it, so that kind of works for me, but uh, I do just like that you have the opportunity, if you wanted, to go in and add a lot of your own details if you want, so that's cool. Now, uh, the other thing for me about this kit is that, uh, or this part of the kit, I guess I should say, it has a lot in common with the G-Self in that most of the seam lines are pretty either hidden as... Uh, armor panel lines or they're very easy to wipe out. Of course probably the most notable ones are going to be along the sides of the cannons but again those are pretty easy to get rid of. There's going to be some on these parts as here uh, on the cannon, the smaller cannons there and then a couple around these larger parts but again they're mostly on just these large parts that are pretty easy to get rid of those seam lines uh, if and when you want to do that. So that's pretty good. So for seam lines, it's got a few, but really not all that bad at all. Now the other thing that it has in common with the G-Self is that uh, the articulation in some areas is great, and in some areas it's not that great. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. The biggest and worst point about the articulation for me is that these main cannons do not move up or down or side to side or anywhere at all. These main cannons are fixed to the body and they don't move at all. The handle here does move uh, so that you can use that if you want or just fold it forward if you don't want to use it. So that's cool. Uh, the handle moves, but the cannons themselves 
are totally fixed in this position, and because the base has no articulation, that means your cannons are only going to be pointing straight ahead, and that might be a little bit boring if you wanted to actually have it in any other kind of pose. So that's going to be the biggest negative in terms of the articulation. Okay, let's move it around and talk about the this back booster part, because when I was building this, didn't really understand uh, why this moves. I mean, yeah, it's one point of articulation, I guess, kind of. But these back booster parts here uh, do move up and down a little bit if you wanted to. I'm not really sure why, uh, but I think you're probably just going to keep them like that most of the time. I'm not really sure why you'd want to have them pointing up. It looks a little bit goofy. You might as well just keep them straight in line like that. Now, just be careful when you're doing that, and you saw I was pressing this down at that time because this th this is a little bit tight so if you want to move that uh, it's going to actually uh, try to move this whole thing and it's putting some stress on there where this base connects into there so just be a little bit careful I would basically just recommend not moving that at all uh, that's that so next thing is the missile pods so the missile pods do move a little bit on the ball joint where they're connected, so they do move, rotate a bit, and they move a little bit like that. This uh, rabbit ear on the side doesn't move at all, it's just fixed attached onto there. Very easy to open the side doors on here, there's just a little tab on the top and bottom, you can just pull that and pull it out, and there you go, that's easy enough, all the missiles are in there. Uh, like I said, that detail looks really good. This is not like fixed in any position like that. You just kind of have to position it correctly. These smaller doors on the bottom I found are a little bit harder to open, especially after I just cut my fingernails. It might have problems, but no, it was fine that time. Just open those up, and then there you go. Then those missile pods are open. Looks pretty good. These smaller doors are a little bit disappointing just because the doors just kind of open up like barn doors. Kind of boring. Four missiles in there just looks a little bit boring so these are something that I might actually just keep closed they kind of looked better like that but I do like these side panels that's definitely really cool that's that then we have the rabbit ears on the top these have some really nice articulation they they're just on ball joints as well but they'll move all around and then some angling like that but the thing about these for me is that I just don't really understand their purpose. Uh, if you look here, uh, it's going to be maybe kind of difficult to show you, but there you can see. This is supposed to be closed, but this is not a seam line. Uh, that is a gap there. And to me, what that looks like is that there was supposed to be a beam effect part on this. Uh, just because of the articulation of this and that it's able to come forward like that and has some pretty good range of movement. Um, again, I don't know, I haven't read the technical specs on this, uh, like on the Gundam Wiki page or something, so I don't know if it does actually have a uh, beam, beam, like, weapon, but to me, that looks like it was supposed to hold a beam effect part on there, so maybe they scrapped it at the last second because uh, the cost of it or something, I don't know, uh, but so we didn't get the beam effect parts that I wanted for the G-Self, we didn't get the beam effect parts that I wanted for the Assault Pack, we got zero beam effect parts with this kit. That's a big disappointment for me. Uh, of course it's got plenty of firepower to go around, but some beam effect parts definitely would have made this kit that much better. Definitely would have made it better, so I don't know. So for me, I just don't really understand why there's that gap there, if not to hold beam effect parts, then why it's really there. I don't know, maybe something in the future we'll see something else, but I don't really expect them to do anything more P-Bandai related for uh, this kit, but I could be wrong, could be pleasantly surprised later. Then uh, the last thing that we've got to move on here is just these smaller cannons. Uh, now these also have a handle that will move up and down, and then they're on these articulated arms that are connected up inside of there, they're kind of very difficult to connect in there actually. You have to make sure you follow the instructions correctly. Uh, don't try to skip ahead like I did, then you'll have a hard time connecting them. But uh, So they do have some nice articulation here, uh, but of course just because 
this space is getting kind of crowded between the main cannons and the missile pods. There's not a whole lot of room for them to go. But if you wanted to have them like way out like that, you definitely could. The articulation allows for them to move and point basically anywhere. So some great articulation there. And that pretty much does it uh, for the assault pack. Pretty simple, but it's definitely uh, looks really cool. I think it's very, very unique looking. For me, I like the look of this a lot more than I like the look of the Meteor unit for the seed kits. So for me, uh, as like a Gundam like heavy add-on part, I definitely like the look of this. So let's go ahead and take a look at them finally together at last. On the back, we've just got a plug there. It's going to plug very simply onto the assault pack. Uh, the problem is that with those with the V-fin, you kind of have to maneuver that between the cannons. But once that's on, it feels very secure. And I don't feel like the kit is going to come separated at all. The other awkward thing about this is that the feet are almost touching the base. Uh, if you point them down at all, they can actually touch the bottom of the base. So I feel like they should have made the arm a little, just a few millimeters taller. Uh, but I guess for me, I also don't really like when bases are too tall, so I don't know, <laughs> kind of, I guess I'm a little bit picky about that. I wouldn't want this too much taller, but a few millimeters taller I think would have been good. But it's good that it's not too tall in a way, it's not like so top heavy, you don't have to worry about it falling. But with all those four different choices of handles to hold on to, um, you are going to have to take the hand off and take it apart. Uh, at least for the side ones. I guess for the top ones you wouldn't need to, but for the side ones you need to take the hand off, uh, pull it apart, snap it back together on the handle. Let's see if I can do this. It's hard to do from this far away. There we go. Then put the wrist back together. It's not easy to do with my big fingers. And there you go. That's uh, holding on to those side handles, the side cannons, then you could, of course, point them how you wanted. And yeah, it looks okay like that. I think you're probably better off uh, having them on the tall, on the higher cannons, the main cannons. Probably going to look a little bit more interesting. Uh, something like that, so that it looks like it's actually kind of holding on to there, but I don't know. It doesn't actually look that great either my own personal opinion, but then of course you can use it uh, with this new rifle as well. And that's pretty much it for the G-Self Assault Pack. Uh, when I went into this, like I said, just from my previous, previous experience with HG G-Self kits, HG Reconquista and G-Kits, I wasn't expecting a lot and I was actually kind of expecting to be disappointed, but I'm happy to say that I was pleasantly surprised by this kit. Yeah, it's not perfect, but I think the imperfections that it has are very normal for HG kits. So, um, really nothing that makes this any worse than any other normal HG. So, it's got a few seam lines to, remo to remove. It's got a few areas where the articulation is not that great. It's got some areas where it could use a little bit more detail. But those are pretty much things that you could say for almost any HG kit. So... That's cool for me. I think the only thing that this kit suffers from uh, more than other HGs is the amount of stickers. A lot of stickers. So that is one thing that is a little bit of a negative. But again, that totally depends on uh, your style of building. For me, uh, I don't actually use them for the build, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But if you are the kind of person that does, just be prepared to put a lot of stickers on there. Uh, one thing that I want to do before I forget, because I often do forget, is a size comparison. So let me just give you a comparison here. It is an RX-78 II Gundam. Uh, of course, when it's on the when the G self is on the base, it's going to have quite a bit more height there. Let me move the camera down a bit. But the G self is actually taller. If I put them next to each other, the G self does have a little bit extra heights to it because of those new legs. Uh, but of course just the size of it is going to be quite large on your shelf. It's definitely going to take up a lot of shelf space. But that's okay. Personally, like I said, I'm pleased with this kit. Alright, so it's time to wrap up this review, and I know it's been a little bit of a long one, but thank you guys for sticking through it. I know there was a lot to say about this, as it does uh, come with a little bit more than your standard kit. 
But uh, now that I've got it up on action base, you can see how that just opens it up uh, for a lot better posability, I think, once you're just able to change the angle of the assault pack itself a little bit. It does make it a little bit more interesting in terms of the kind of poses that you can get it in, I think. So basically, to end this, I just want to go over, once again, quickly the pros and cons of this kit, starting off with the cons. Uh, there's too many stickers, but again, that's something that just totally depends on your modeling style. If you don't care about stickers and you're the kind of person that just immediately throws them away right off the bat, or doesn't use them at all, or whatever you do with them, as long as you don't use them on the kit, then basically it doesn't really matter much to you. Next thing, there are some areas where the articulation is not that great, where I think the articulation could have been a little bit better, or should have been a little bit better, but uh, overall, basically, you're able to do pretty much any pose that you would want to do with a huge uh, kit like this. Next thing, probably one of the biggest cons for me is that there's no beam effect parts. I would have liked the beam effect parts for the G-Self's beam sabers, or I definitely would have liked some beam effect parts for somewhere on the assault pack itself. Then next, the base. The base that we get is not articulated at all. I think this uh, kit definitely uh, benefits quite a lot from having a base that has some articulation. And the last thing, uh, basically, is that there's no clear, uh, there's no sticker behind the clear part on the chest. Uh, there are a couple other clear parts on this kit, but basically that's the only area where I felt like it really would have benefited from a, having a sticker behind there. And then finally, let's recap the pros. Uh, there are very few seam lines. Uh, of course there are some seam lines, but most of the seam lines on here are very easy to get rid of on the mobile suit itself and on the uh, assault pack, so seam lines are pretty good. Then again, uh, there, the assault pack especially is lacking a lot of details, but I think this could be either a pro or a con, as I said before, depending on your taste. If you want something with a very simple aesthetic, then it's going to look great as is. If you want something that uh, has more detail, you're going to want to look elsewhere. If you want something that's very plain so that you can do a lot of your own customizing, then this is going to be great for you. The next thing is I like what's new about the G-Self. I like the new legs, I like the new color of the uh, chest and the torso and the shoulders. I like it in red much, much better than blue. It's more unique. I mean, the Gundam itself is already unique, but Having it in the standard Gundam colors just kind of makes it, okay, it's a new design, but same colors, it's a little bit boring. I definitely like these new colors in this version much better. And the last thing, and probably the most important thing, is that overall it just looks great. I mean, at the end of the day, all these technical things about uh, seam lines and stickers and articulation, all that stuff, it all kind of falls to the wayside. It doesn't really matter a whole lot when you've got the kit and it's all finished and just how does it look. Because when, as I've, I've said this before, I don't know which video it was, but it was probably a long time ago, uh, when it comes down to it, Basically, whenever you're showing a kit, you're not moving it as you're showing it, whether you're showing it in a review like this, yeah, it's turning, but I'm not mo actually moving anything on it, or you're showing it in photos. So, basically, the most important thing is, does it look good when it's all said and done? And this kit looks good when it's all said and done. I mean, it definitely would take a little bit of work to make it look really outstanding, amazing, but just, I mean, and this could just be personal taste as too, I like the design of the... Uh, the um, assault pack itself. There are certain portions of the G-Self that I still don't like. The legs are much better on this kit, but I still don't like the shoulders, but those are very hidden among all this other stuff that's going on here. So, definitely, I am very pleased with this kit. Definitely recommend it. It's a little bit expensive for an HG, but when you consider everything you're getting with it, there's a lot of plastic in there, so I definitely think the price is justified. It's definitely a heck of a lot cheaper than the Meteor units for the HG seed kits, so if you wanted like a fairly larger HG kit to work with, especially if you're a beginner and you've been mostly working with HGs and you're not sure if you're ready for something with a full inner frame, like an RG or a Master Grade, then this would definitely be something that you could get that's something larger, but definitely not very complicated. So that is it for my review for this kit. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, leave those below, of course. Questions, comments, anything you want to say. Uh, thanks for uh, checking out the video, liking the video, subscribing, all of that. Thank you guys, and I'll see you soon.